Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm Larry Wydell, and before we get started, if you want to know exactly how to win again and again, go to wydellonwinning.com forward slash webinar now to watch something I've put together for you. Now let's get going into this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm here with Miguel Illich from Miami, Florida. Hey, Miguel, how are you? I'm doing amazing, Coach. Thank you for asking. Enjoying the weather, man. And I just found out in talking to Miguel, I was down in the Perez Art Museum yesterday, right across the street from where he lives. I didn't know. I didn't know he was that close. But, I probably uh, saw you walking around from my Yeah, bed. you probably saw me. Yeah. And so uh, next time, I'll let you know when I go down. But yeah. anyway, Miguel, this is uh, fantastic. I could, congratulations on going over the million uh, dollar income level in your business. It's just an extreme uh, high achievement. And you're a young guy. Uh, how, how old are you? I just turned 40 two months ago. Just turned 40. And uh, you, uh, you look younger than that. But <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Miguel is uh, from uh, Colombia. We're going to hear his story. And tomorrow he's flying back to Colombia. And he was telling me that he goes back and forth quite a bit. And uh, we were talking about, you know, I told him I heard it was a great place. But he said, well, you know, as long as you stay safe. And it found, I found out. He owns his own bulletproof car. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just, just, just in case. Uh, yeah. And uh, just for when he's in town, you know, so he's not down there that much, but when he's down there, he likes to relax. He likes to be safe. And so uh, uh, we all live different lives. So this is, Miguel is the first guy I know that has his own bulletproof car. <laughs> Other than the president, you know. So yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Miguel, uh, just to give people a little bit of background, you uh, have had experience, all kind of experience with market research, commercial manager, uh, you know, account manager, real estate specialist, things like that. But in 2013, you got into financial services as an apprentice trainee, you know, and uh, starting at the bottom. Within two years, you had moved up to where you had your own operation, which is amazing. And within one year, you had opened three more locations, which is incredible. That was 2016. By three, yeah, 2015, you had your own. 2016, you'd open up three. And now, at this point, uh, you've got 13. 13 more locations and 13 more on deck uh, scheduled to open this year. So congratulations on your growth. And uh, you're always a lot of fun to talk to. You always are high energy. And it's just great to see you continuing to have success. It shows you're doing, uh, you got a good, uh, great foundation and you're doing a lot of the right thing. So talk, let people know where you came from and where you got that uh, entrepreneurial uh, spirit and that drive, take charge yourself, make things happen. Where did that come from? Do you know, Larry, that that's a great question because my, my desire to do something big with my life didn't start a couple of years ago. I, since I was a kid, since I was a young kid, I remember, look, I'm from Colombia from the North Coast. It's called La Guajira. It's a, very, it's a, like, it's a desert. And it's a, it's a fr frontier with Venezuela. Okay. With Venezuela. Okay. So there is a lot of uh, uh, traffic, not traffic, in drug trafficking, smuggling. There are things like that that happens in the borders. Yeah, I am from there. My dad never did something like that. My dad is an engineer. And my mother was a homestay mom. But when, when I was a kid, I used to see the other kids and dads with the beautiful cars, the beautiful homes, 
uh, having fun and traveling and having all the stuff that I wanted to have. And I didn't know how to get them. I was like thinking, why my dad doesn't have those things? So, so I used to ask my friends. Yeah, that's I hilarious. My friends, so what, what does your dad do? And they said, uh, oh, he's a, he's a merchant. Oh, merchant. So I didn't know what a merchant meant. So was yeah. like, he's a merchant. So, okay, I want to be a merchant. Merchant was a drug dealer, basically, drug trafficker <laughs> for, for them. So <laughs> I didn't know what drugs were or anything, but I just saw that they say, oh, he's a merchant. So I used to say, I want to be like this guy. I want to be like this guy. I want to be like this guy. And then one day my sister explained me, said, no, 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 no. You don't want to be like that. Because those, they, they end up in jail. I said, why? They're merchants. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. They're not merchants. They work with this and this is illegal. So I was like, oh, wow. So I, I grew up so, so in, or seeing two ways of making money in, in my country, basically, in the, where I'm from. One was being a merchant and the other one was being in politics, which ah. I didn't like. Yeah. I never liked politics. My dad was independent, was a, a, a civil engineer working as an independent person. Sometimes we had money, sometimes we didn't, but it was a, 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 okay, a good life. When I went and I moved to Bogota, the capital, we have to move. You know about the, the bulletproof car it is, is fun, but it has a reason behind it. Yeah. My dad was kidnapped. Really? Yeah, when I was 14 years old. So he was kidnapped. He was there kidnapped for two months. And then when he got, he got rescued by the army. But before he got rescued, we had to pay the guerrilla. The guerrilla kept the money. They asked for more money. Then he was rescued. When he was rescued, we moved from La Guajira to Bogota, which is the capital. In the capital, um, my sister had her boyfriend. My other sister had her boyfriend. And then they got engaged and I started, I started a, a relationship with my brother-in-law. He was a stockbroker. Ah, okay. How old are you now? And, and at that moment, I'm, 20, I'm 18 years old, 18, okay. 18 19. How, so how, started, how old were you when your dad got uh, kidnapped? 14, I was 14 when he got kidnapped. Wow. So when we went there to Bogota and I saw this guy working and he saw that I was hungry for making money. I also always, I want to make money. I want to work on this. I want to learn about that. He told me, why didn't you learn about stocks? And I can teach you. And I said, why? I, I, don't, I don't think that you can make money on that. He said, what? And he showed me how much money he was, he was making. He was making a lot of money. A lot of money, mean, meaning in that moment, probably it was like 20 years ago, he was making probably $100,000 a day, a day. A day. Yeah, he was one of the top stock brokers in Colombia back then. So I saw a way to make money legally. So I stuck to this guy. I learned from him so many things. One of those things that I learned from him is that you work to make money. You don't just wait to see how it happens. And then they moved here because of security reasons. They moved to the United States, to Miami. I was doing some businesses in Panama. I had a nightclub in Panama. Then I came here for vacations. And in those vacations, he convinced me to stay. He said, hey, you wanted to learn about stocks, about the stock market, what I do, why don't you stay? I said, no, I have a club in Panama. He said, are you making money in the club? He said, no, no, I'm making any money. Then why don't you move here and that's it. And you, you always ask me to learn. Now I'm telling you that I'm gonna teach you. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna stay. I work for my brother-in-law for the first three years. At the same time that I was learning from him, I was working as a, a delivery guy for a liquor store. I was, I remember one day I did, I, I moved a business from one store to another for $75. For $75, I moved an entire store, a clothing store from one place to another, just for $75. That, that's how bad you it is. <laughs> You had not learned the lesson about negotiation yet. <laughs> no, I didn't know anything. They told me, hey, do you want to do something on the, on the weekend? Say, yeah, we'll pay you for $25 if you move all those clothes from here to that place. I said, okay, I was like moving clothes. I ain't that tired, like oh, right. all bruises and everything. So in that moment, the financial crisis came here in 2008. 
he hit. This guy lost a lot of money and he closed the business that he was doing in stocks. He closed his own business. And I had to find a job working at a restaurant. So while I was working with him and working part-time on the weekends, I was making like around $4,000 a month. Then when I started working at the restaurant, I was making $1,700 a month. So I had, to, I had to figure a way to make up a little bit on the money that I was making. So I decided to work one restaurant in the morning from nine to four, and then one restaurant at night from 4.30 till 10.30 every day. So Larry, I was working every day from, I was waking up at 6 a.m. in the morning, going to bed at 11.30, seven days a week. Now, were you married at this time? No, single, I'm still single. Yeah. Stay, okay. Single. Yeah. So Work, working hard, working hard just to survive, not to make money because I was making like around twenty hundred dollars a month. But I was work. I, I had to work like that to be uh, to at least have something to pay my car, to pay my apartment, to pay to live by myself, which it was in an efficiency, a small place. Uh -huh. And and since the people that I was surrounded with was people from the restaurant, the cooks, the cashiers, the bossers. I started thinking like them, so I didn't have furniture. I didn't have furniture. I have an inflatable mattress. And I was living like bad, bad. My neighbors, there were people out of jail. <laughs> so I was crazy, but you know what happened? My sister was working for Mary Lynch a financial institution here in the United States. And she was taking the series seven exam. Since she had to study, she asked me, can I go and stay at your house for a couple of days, four days, let's say, so I can study there. Nobody's gonna bother me. and I can pass the test. I said, sure, come, but, but bring your mattress. That's what I told her. <laughs> She's like, okay, so she brought a mattress and she stayed up for four days. At the end, she passed the test. I pay attention that I, at that moment, I realized about, about the licenses. So I knew about the licenses. So she passed the test. But then when she went back to her house, her home, she called me and she said, why are you living like that? I said, how am I living? She said, you're living like in extreme poverty. I was like, no. Miguel, you don't even have furniture. I said, I don't need furniture. <laughs> I, thought I was thinking, I don't need furniture. Why do I need furniture if I work every day? <laughs> I just need a bed to, to stay. And she yeah. said, no, 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 no. You have to change your life. I was like, yeah, okay. Help me find change my life. I don't know how. A couple months later, she called me and she said, hey, I'm going to introduce you to my friend. He can get you like, get license. I was like, what license? And she said, the securities license. I was like, oh, okay. So how much do they pay? And she said, no, they don't pay. If you work, they pay. If you don't work, they don't pay. I was like, commission? No, 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 no. Wait, no. Yeah. I want to make like $50,000 a year or something. And she said, look stupid. Go get a license and then you come work with me at Merrill Lynch. I was like, okay. So that makes sense. So I went and got licensed at the company that I'm working with right now. And then going, I, I needed to learn. I was licensed, but I didn't know anything. So I started going to the office. to the Was, this, Col was this Columbia or the United States? Oh, it was here already. It was here okay. already. United States. Yeah. yeah. So I and was going to the office. When, when, when did you move here? I moved here in 2007. Okay. By the end of the year. And a year later, it was a crash. Right. Okay. Market crash. So I started going to the office to learn about investments, insurance, and everything. Just to go and apply for a job at a bank like, I don't know, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Morgan Stanley, things like that. And by going to the office one day, I noticed that the guy that was training me, my broker, he was making like around $300,000. And then I asked my sister, how much are you making there? Are you bank? And she said, 77,000. And I was, I, I told her, but this guy is making 300,000. And she said, yeah, you're the one who wants to work for Merrill Lynch. I was like, really? Then she said, yeah, why don't you try there? And if you don't like it, you come work with me here. I said, okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. The thing I'm gonna try 
I started going to the office and little by little, like setting up appointments and going on appointments with the broker. I didn't want, you know, that one thing that I learned is that I, I wasn't listening to the guy. I wanted to do it my way because I was thinking I'm old enough. I'm not, I'm not an adult. I know how to do my things, but I wasn't getting any results. One day, the meetings are, are on Tuesday. So one day on Tuesday night, I called the guy and I said, hey, uh, William, uh, I'm going to take some time off from the business. I'm going to get stronger in my mind, get some, like some, breathe some air, and then I'll come back in a couple of months. And that's why he said, if you believe anything that I say, now is the moment that you have to be closer to the office. And I was like, uh-huh. He said, where are you? And I said, at the gym. Come to the office. I said, no, 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 I'm in working out clothes. He said, come to the office like that. So I went to the office. I sat with the guy. And I was like, okay, so I'm here. And he said, Miguel, you want to have my results, but you want to work the way that you have always worked in your life in other things. And you're not working like I'm working. Basically, you want to have my results, but keep your old lifestyle, like with your friends and everything. Right. Then he said, if you work like I work and you do the things that I do, the things that I tell you to do, you're going to have the results that I have. I'm better. And I asked him, you, so you're saying that I'm not getting results because of the way that I behave? And he said, yep. <laughs> Just like that. Yep. And you know what happened? I went to a meeting. This was this Willie? Is a Willie. Yeah. I went to a meeting with Omar Oropesa. Yeah. Willie, Willie's upline. So Omar Oropesa said in a meeting, do you know why Willie and Lorena are making more money than all of you combined? And I was like, mm -mm, I have no idea. And he said, because Willie and Lorena are working on a Friday night while you're all celebrating that you're broke. So I was like, oh, he sold me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was like, what do you mean? I asked Willie, how does he mean that you work on a Friday night? And I said, yeah. He said, come on, Willie, you are in Miami. Everybody goes out on a Friday night. He said, no, I don't go out on a Friday night. I go to appointments. He said, Willie, everybody goes to car, um, happy hour on a Friday night. And he said, I don't go to happy hour. I go to meetings, to train, to, to get to appointment. And he said, Miguel, how much money did you make last Friday night? And I said, money? I didn't make any money. I went to a karaoke. Okay, so how much money did you make at the karaoke? He said, I didn't make any money. I spent $200. And he said, I went to an appointment and I made $3,000. <laughs> then he said, he asked me, how many times have you been at the office on a Saturday morning for training? I was like, oh, no, really? Saturday morning? Who goes to a training on a Saturday morning? And he said, the people who doesn't go to karaoke on a Friday night. <laughs> wow. So every time he was talking to me, I was like, pa, pa, pa. But that helped me understand that I wasn't doing the things that he was doing. And you know what happened? You can, you can see the books behind me, right? Right. I started reading for the first time in my life. And the first book that I read that I actually have in my, in my, in my drawer is Think and Grow Rich. I never read that book. I heard of it, but I never read it. I started reading the book. And then I don't remember if over that book, that book or another one, what it says, if you want to have the results of, that someone has, you have to do exactly the same thing that that somebody is doing or how he's behaving. So I decided to copy Willie Naranjo on everything he was doing. Willie Naranjo didn't drink. I stopped drinking. I'm not saying that I was a drunk, but at least on the weekends, I used to go out. I stopped going to parties. Uh, the no days off mentality, I had it from the restaurant, but I decided to apply it here. So I did that for two and a half years, so 900 days. I know that it's 900 days because I did, uh, I, I counted it tomorrow, this morning in a meeting. So it was 900 days, no days off, no alcohol, no parties. No, nothing that is, that it wasn't work. Larry, my life changed. My life changed for, I went from making 
$1,800 a month to making over $40,000 a month in just three wow. years. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Thanks for sharing that step-by-step -step process and that wake-up process you went through in your own mind because, and I want to go dig into this, but the point is until you go through that wake up, you're never going to be woken up. <laughs> you're never yeah. going to, you're never going to wait. You're never going to be doing what you should be doing, can be doing what's never achieving what's possible for you to achieve when you're goofing off. I used, I say this all the time. It's like when you're training a new person, I don't know how good you can be. I don't, but I said one thing I know you'll never be great piddling around, you know, nobody piddles around, goofs around, and then all of a sudden, hey, I'm great, you know, you don't become, yeah. don't become the number one anything in the world uh, by cutting corners, goofing off, going to the parties on Friday night, and stuff like that, you pay a bigger price, but then the reward turns out to be mind-blowing compared to what you thought it would be on the front end and you found that to be true right the price is nothing compared to the reward that you get you know one thing that hit me when i was uh, starting in this business i had a girlfriend she's an accountant and she comes from a, from a wealthy family and i was working as a cashier in a restaurant one day she tells me miguel um we can't continue together. And I said, what do you mean? She said, yeah, I can't continue having you as a boyfriend. I was like, why not? And was you stop loving me or what? She said, no, 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 I still love you, but I'm an accountant. We have a firm, you know, that I have my firm. I can't be going around and my boyfriend being a cashier at a fast food restaurant. Uh... That hurt. And you know what people tell me like, oh, she's just a bad person. I said, no, 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 no. Thank God she told me that. Right. Because I wasn't really paying attention to those things. In that moment, I said, she's embarrassed of going now with me because I work as a cashier in a fast food restaurant. And maybe some people think, oh, but that's love and bliss and that. No, that's not love and this and that. She loved me, but she was thinking with her head, not her heart. She was thinking, this guy is not going anywhere. I'm not going to go anywhere with him. Right. We cut in that relationship and she's had a counter, right? So she, I asked her, one day I asked her, how much money makes your best client? And she said, 200,000. And I told her, I'm going to be your best client one day. <laughs> Larry, she was my accountant when I made 50,000, when I made 100,000. When I made 200,000, when I made 300,000, that moment I was like, am I the, your best client? She said, yeah, you're my best client. I said, okay, God, this is it. I, I, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> I need to go to <laughs> Fantastic. If you enjoyed what you've heard and are dead serious about finding out for yourself exactly how this works in the real world, I've taken the most valuable business lessons I've learned over 40 years and put them into something for you to watch. Go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now in order to move up as fast as possible. I'm Larry Whitell, and I run the Million Dollar Mastermind. Go, go, go.